hi everyone and welcome to the video this is another fleece prep video for team beauty and the fleece we are a team that is participating in the tour de fleece for 2020 we are participating in the hand spun experience group on facebook and we are supporting our local farmers the farmer that we are supporting um, her name is grace fryer and her farm name is Every Season Farm. So um, we are working through Rambouillet, so we're doing a breed study spin along. And this video is a part two of the fiber preparation. So the first video, I showed you all how to flick open the ends for stubborn tips. And that way you can, um, proceed to wash the fleece and not worry about flicking those tips afterwards. So now I'm going to show you what the fleece looks like after. I do have some more tips that I have saved, so I'll show you what the, those look like. And then I'll show you what some of the fleece looks like. I'll show you what the fleece looks like before you flick those tips open. And again, if you have not seen the previous video um, to this one, feel free to pause this here and go back and check out the previous video. So after you flick open those tips, you want to go ahead and um, wash the fleece. Now, if you decide that you want to keep the fleece organized and you want to um, separate the fleece into bundles, you can do that. And right here below, I have different examples of different ways you can go about washing your fleece. So I have a few ideas that I came up with um, for using everyday items. One item that I saw happened to be at a local um, dollar store and that particular item was a buff puff. A, um, I also found another item that you can use and that one was a um, mesh, um, a braided mesh um, back washer. And then I found a third item that was in the same section in that dollar store that happens to be a back scratcher or a back washer that had mesh um, that was ruffled together. So I decided to deconstruct those items and I made or I discovered that there were um, pieces of mesh tubes that were put together to make those items so that is what I'll show you all really quickly so <clears throat> right here I have mesh tubing that came from a back washer that had a handle on it. So what I did was I took the handle and I removed the cotton thread that held the handle that I basically was attached to both the handle and the mesh material and just cut right there here here and here and I slowly unraveled until I was able to retrieve long flexible tubes and the mesh has really nice large holes in them so that's perfect because you can allow some of the dirt to fall through those holes when the material is a little bit wider and the fact that it's a little springy helps because you can fill more fleece widthwise into these um, mesh tubes so that was one that I deconstructed the 
other one was the bus pup and I, I was able to retrieve a ton of tubing from the buff puff. Look how long. So what I could do with what ca I could do with this one is to go ahead and cut this down and use these, and then put this down, and then for the one that had little chains, which kind of look like donuts. There were about nine strips, about nine strips in one of the back washers that were made out of this mesh material. And this particular one had holes that were a little bit smaller than the others. So if you look closely, it's a little bit smaller. Um, what's nice about these is that when you're filling these, it, it's very flexible, so it will fold over and you can insert fleece into them with no problem. You don't have to worry about stuffing your hand really far at the bottom and trying to fit fleece in there. Also, because it has holes in it, you can also sew or thread a piece of crochet thread or some other thread to section off um, little areas so that you can put fleece in there. So what I did, what I did was use crochet cotton um, thread. This particular one was one that I just had sitting around in my stash and um, and I decided I, was, I would use this and also a darning needle and separate sections for the tubes. So what you see here in the back top right corner would be three of those smaller tubes and they're sectioned off using some of the crochet thread. So this is what they look like after it's washed and dried. And I left the ends long on these so I can cut off in one of the knots I can cut off and then I can pull this out and I can reuse the same, um, the same thread and go ahead and not have to create a new knot. I can just re-thread this in a different section if I want to. The fleece actual, actually was a little bit longer when I filled this um, section. And when I washed it, it shrunk down a little bit. And um, it's still very springy, so when I take this out, it will still stretch and, um, and you will see how elastic it really is. But um, I left a little bit of space so that the fleece can move around and it can breathe um, as it is in the soak as well as the wash and as well as the rinse. So as you can see with the flick tips in here that you don't see much yellowing here and you also don't see a ton of vegetation matter or VM as we call it. So um, the these really did the trick and you can actually fit um, for this particular size, I fit about an ounce of fiber, of uh, unwashed fiber in here. But um, you can fit more. I actually had a little bit of space to do another um, bundle up top, but I left it open. So that's what that looks like after, after washing and also allowing this to dry. Now, <coughs> you could also use laundry bags which is what I did for this bundle set. And I put fleece in here and it's still pretty organized. So I know the tips are here and the cut end is here. And the only reason I know it is because I can see the slight yellowing here. Um, I did flip the tips on these also. There was a little bit of vegetation uh, matter that's in here. And what you'll notice is that when you wash a fleece, you're not necessarily washing all of the tiny um, bits of vegetation matter out, but you are washing out dirt, mud, and um, other things that might be attached to the fleece. So um, it's completely normal to see a little bit of um, pieces of 
vegetation matter still in there. So it's not uncommon, but this will work because you can completely submerge it. So that's that. It's cleaned up really well. Then I also put some fleece in a mesh bag here. And as you can see, it's not nearly as organized as the others. The fleece um, set in these columns this way. So the tip end is here, the cut end is here. Um, and this last column here, I actually turned the fleece sideways, or I should say um, right side up so that the cut end is at the bottom and the tips are here. Cut end is at the bottom, tips are here. Um, this is if you want to keep the fleece nice and organized. If you don't want it nice and organized this way, you definitely can wash it um, as a large batch, but um, this is a convenient way to do it as well. Um, what's nice about this is that you can sew thread through this mesh bag material and just make these columns just as I did with this one. The only downside with using um, sewing thread is that it's harder to remove and it will be much easier to use um, the crochet cotton thread because it's removable and you can actually you can remove it from the section that you have it in and you can space it for the next fleece that you want to um, wash so for this particular fleece the staple was about four inches so this section here is between four and a half or four and three quarters of an inch. So if I wanted to wash a fleece that is about five inches, I would change this width of these, these uh, columns that I made to accommodate for the size of the fleece, um, the lock length that would fit into that column. So I would make this section a little bit wider for a fleece that's a little bit longer. So that's the um, upside to using a crochet cotton thread or some other thread that's removable. Um, I can show you what the fleece looks like if you don't flick open the tips and you just wash it in a bundle. Now I use Unicorn Power Scour and it does an excellent job of washing the fleece here, but as you can see, there are still some tips here that are really, really dark in comparison to the rest of the fleece. Um, you can see some yellow, yellowing there. And um, I can actually feel a little more lanolin here in this fleece in comparison to the others. I don't feel any lanolin left over at all. And I treated this one exactly the same. So I honestly would wash this again, or at least put it in another um, hot rinse to um, lift some more of the lanolin out before I use this or put tools on it um, or put this through like a drum carter or something like that. That way I don't put the grease through my carter, but it's a different approach. It would be faster, but again, your end result is that you would have these ends that you might want to flick open afterwards. So now my task would be to open up these tips either with combs or to use a flip carter and take my time and open them. So this is the comparison. This and again this is what it looks like before. So you have the before and this is without the tips being flipped. Now, I did bring an, a mesh bag with me so I can show you how you can thread, how you can thread your material so I took a really big mesh bag this time. See, I drop it here. And I'm able to make really, maybe, let's see, one, two, three, four, probably another um, 
five sections or six sections for fleece, I can actually make another row or column along this side here. But what I would do to make this a little bit faster, because this might seem a bit tedious, what I did was I um, went ahead and put the darning needle on, um, I threaded through the crochet hook, and then, I'm sorry, the crochet thread, excuse me, <laughs> and then I um, used a really long length of the thread, and then I went ahead and started to attach the front and the back loosely. That way it's easy to remove. I knot at the end and then I would snip at the top and I would leave a long length here and then knot it off. So that way if I want to take this out, I can. But I kept the needle I kept the needle above where I knotted off so I didn't have to re-thread my needle every time I did a column. So I would just start again at the bottom of the next column. See here. I would start again at the bottom of the next column and travel all the way up with my with my needle. And now I'm done with this last knot here and I would double knot it just to be safe or even triple knot it, just to make sure it doesn't go through the mesh. The mesh is a little bit big on here. Um, I would cut some of the length a little bit longer, and my thread is still attached to my um, needle. And then I would just start over down here. So it's really easy to do. I'm not gonna cut this off right now, but I'll show you how I do a little bit of the threading. So it's a little slippery. All right, so what I would do is just like weaving, if you're used to um, knitting and crocheting, you would just go up a row. Hold on here, so here we are. And you can go every two. It doesn't have to be really fancy, and honestly, on a few of these, I've actually been slightly diagonal. But you're cinching it here, and when you're done, you just pull it, you just pull it through. Straighten it out, make a knot at the bottom, and then when you, at the top, you do the same thing. You make a knot, and make sure your thread and your needle is at the very top, and then you cut it. That way you can start the next row that you're ready to start. So this one is um, really easy to do and it's quick if you don't have to keep re-threading your needle. So that's how it's done. And um, when I'm ready to put the fleece in, when I'm ready to put the fleece in, <clears throat> I just go ahead and decide where I want the cut in of the fleece and where I would like the tips to face so I can choose if I want if I want the fleece to be um, right side up so bottom here and top cut in here tip here or I can have it so that the cut in is this way and the tip in is facing that way it, it really depends on the size that you allow for your columns but um, it works out really well. So the bigger mesh that I use will fit more fleece, obviously. If I lay this out, you kind of see how wide that could be. Um, but yeah, this works out nice, so you can actually fit more in there. Um, if you have a smaller area for washing fleece, the tubes might be better options. And you would thread it the same way, so you're not um, re-threading your crochet thread every time that you put fleece into those tubes. So it's a nice way to do this. And when you take them out of the tubes, this is what they look like. They look really nice. nice. And I know which side is the um, cut end. The cut, end or the cut ends are facing the bottom here, or I should say my left, and the tips are facing to the right. So this is what this looks like 
Now, as far as the um, hot water uh, pre-soak, I find that it helps a lot to do a hot water pre-soak. Um, it saves on um, both water and it also saves on um, time and it makes it so that you're using less of your um, scour product. So I used um, hot water that was between 135 degrees and Fahrenheit, between 135 degrees and 140 degree Fahrenheit. And this is what the water looked like after. So I don't know if you can see how that looks to compare what tap water looks like this is what the tap water looks like in this smaller cup here so the hot water um, soak was perfect for the fleece and what I would do is just do the hot water soak first do that for 15 minutes set up the um, the scour in a, in a separate bucket or container and take it straight from the soak, the hot water soak, and right into the um, scour. And I would do that between 15 to 20 minutes. And again, you're using the same temperature. And then um, as far as the rinse, I actually use the exact same temperature that I use for um, the scour. So it's a really easy process. It takes more time just getting your fibers prepared the way you'd like. And then after the actual washing process does not take long at all. And to speed up the process for drying, you can use a spin dryer. And this happens to work really well for these. For everything that you see here, I use a spin dryer to spin um, a good majority of the water out. So it took less time to it took less time to dry because I used this uh, a spin dryer to assist with that. So that is what I did to prepare for the Tour de Fleece using the Rambouillet Fleece. And I have more to use and I tried the different methods. That way I can show you all what my results were. So if you have any questions, be sure to leave your questions in the comments. Um, I do read them and check them. If you have any questions um, that you'd like to um, ask in the group feel free to ask in the group you can also post pictures we are um, we are doing the tour de fleece on Facebook in the hand spun experience group and you're more than welcome to join us and use whatever fleece you have I am here to help so I hope this video helps you with your fleece washing process and I hope you have a great day take care